Northern Queensland is home to rich biodiversity. The rainforest is filled with dense vegetation and wildlife, unlike any other region. Trees compete to fill the vast canopy. Decomposers are hard at work on the forest floor, filling the soil with rich nutrients. The savanna, on the other hand, is known for its rocky landscape and open canopy. Although it's located only 45 minutes away from the rainforest, it offers a completely new set of vegetation and wildlife. Yet, they have something in common. Trees from the same ancestry reside in both places. Our mission was to find out how these two close relatives adapted to these drastically different environments. We studied the functional traits of Grevalea baleana, found in the rainforest, and Grevalea glauca, found in the savanna. Wait, but what are functional traits? Glad you asked. Functional traits are exactly what they sound like. They are traits that aid living things with their physiological, mechanical, and ecological processes. In our Natural traits represent adaptations for the environment and are important proxies for, like, for physiological processes like photosynthesis, uh, transpiration, and water transport. Uh, so for few ecologists, we are often very interested in understanding specific ecological strategies of species. So by measuring functional traits, we are able to actually compare the ecological strategies of species, for example, that occur in very different environments. We collected 40 samples of Grevillea biliana and Grevillea glauca and measured 27 functional traits. We've separated those traits into four different categories, leaf, stem, anatomical, and flammability traits. We have measured traits such as leaf area, leaf thickness, and chlorophyll content. Leaf traits include looking at a morphological and anatomical level to better understand how photosynthesis is optimized in rainforest and savanna environments. Stem morphology traits include bark thickness, height, DBH, and wood density. This involves an assortment of variables that attest to a tree's structural integrity and their defenses against disturbances. Anatomical traits were assessed at a microscopic level and included vessel size and vessel fraction. This allowed us to examine how the trees maximize water and nutrient transport through their vessel structures. Flammabilities. <laughs> Lastly, we assessed the flammability of the Baleana and Glauca samples in terms of the maximum burn temperature, burnt biomass, and burn rate. These variables help us to interpret fire adaptation respective to different habitats and frequency of disturbances. In our research, we discovered multiple concrete differences between Grevalea baleana and Grevalea glauca. Some of our most significant findings were traits leaf area, stomatal density, and parenchyma fraction. We concluded that the rainforest species had larger leaf areas. This is likely due to greater canopy cover and competition in the rainforest. Larger leaf areas aid rainforest trees in capturing sunlight for photosynthesis. Savanna trees are more likely to be spaced out, so finding sunlight in the open canopy is not a problem. We also found that the savanna species had a lower stomatal density. Stomata are used to regulate gas exchange and control for water loss. Lower stomatal density therefore makes sense for the savanna species as a defense against cyclical precipitation and common drought. The difference in parenchyma fractions between the two species was also significant. We hypothesized that the savanna species would contain a greater amount of parenchyma structure by area than the rainforest species. Parenchyma are used to store water during dry spouts, so it makes sense that the savanna would have more of this mechanism. We found out that flammability traits were not significantly different between the two species, which were surprising to us. We hypothesized that this could be due to their shared ancestry, rather than an adaptation to their respective environment. Through our research, we gained a better understanding of the Grevillea species and the environments that they live in. Our research can also help us understand the climate as a driver for ecological adaptations which can help us have a more robust foundation for managing and restoring these habitats. We hope that our findings will encourage future studies on closely related species to understand their ecological adaptations, especially in terms of ever-changing climatic conditions. Perfect.